is pretty much unknown to the general public, which is pretty amazing, right? So just a, a quick visual history saying it went from nowhere to the fifth largest website in the world that everyone depends on now when they do a Google search or any kind of search. Uh, so then activity of Wikipedia, how it was done, the importance of open source software, free as in beer and free as in freedom, right? So some display that kind of just shows that, at least in the English language, we have this problem that free means two different things. So it could be Libra or gratis, right? Um, Wiki markup, how does it work? So actually, what does the code look like behind the scenes? And that's turned into a real page that you see on the web. The people of Wikipedia, right? So you can actually imagine these as different stalls, right? Kind of one is, how does Wikipedia get done? And then who are the people behind Wikipedia? They're volunteers, they're not paid employees. What do they look like? Pictures from Wikimania or something showing the breadth of different types of folks who edit Wikipedia. Some of the numbers about editing, you know, how many edits per day, you know, what, who are active or very active users. Uh, these are all very basic stats you can find on Wikimedia servers. Stories about editing, so little case studies. If you really want to get into some of the weirder stories, like what is an edit war? Danzig, if you really want to get into that, you know, so there are all different things that you could do to show that this is a complex community that does a lot of behind the scenes decision making to deliver what you see as an article at the end of the day. Um, yeah, so user stories, faces, voices. We thought this was really important that people go on the web and they see Wikipedia, but they have no idea who the people are behind it. So it was really important to show these things. And when I was at Wikimedia in 2005, the first one, I did about 20 to 25 interviews with Wikipedians from all over the world. Sat them down in the garden and interviewed them saying, how did you find out about Wikipedia? How did you start editing? So a lot of those videos you could cut together into something really interesting. Right? So that's what, um, that's what we're planning to do for this. I don't know if we'll have all the time to do that. For this. The technology of Wikipedia. Right? So you could even have a little uh, portion of your exhibit saying, hey, you know what, this is pretty cool because we support multiple writing systems. How do you support two different writing systems in Chinese, three different writing systems for some languages where you need to mix, you know, Cyrillic, Latin, and Arabic? Right? Just a brief note on Kazakh, there's uh, like 50 people from Kazakhstan here, they arrived just... 50? Yeah. <laughs> Holy cow. Two-thirds of these are school kids. Really? Quite active Wikipedians. Wow. Last year we two. I haven't seen them. <laughs> <laughs> Several of them just sent me emails, and uh, uh, too I, I, I am going to have a session with them tomorrow. So the price definitely works. <laughs> what session are you having with them? Um, some uh, open session because uh, they're in, in special schools, and right. um, we we want to see how we can bring some science right. into the stuff that they are doing. On the well, let me know. I'd love to meet them. Last year we had two Kazakh folks, right, in DC. Fifty now. Wow. We're just a group. And then the technology, if you want to get this deep, you know, the open source software behind the scenes that runs it, if you want to get this technical, you could run like, you can even have a schematic that kind of says, you know, here's how the whole thing works. Like that. Um, how do you serve traffic from a multi-billion dollar organization on a fraction of the budget, right? To show that we really, really squeeze a lot of performance out of law, not that but big of a hardware uh, budget. And, um, yeah, you can show even deeper, like how do squid caches work and all that stuff. That's actually a little bit more technical. May I just ask mm -hmm. you a question? Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm lacking um, fantasy, but to me it sounds pretty much as if you were relating heavily on, on text, like you will edit the things and you will put them there and they will be printed out. Oh yeah, I mean, so this is this is not even getting into what kind of artifacts or visuals or interactives or pictures or videos. This is just a rough outline conceptually, oh, okay. but you're right. And then, then we get into okay, what can we actually get that people can see? Yeah, because right? you mentioned well videos, and like you said, you would have graphs. Okay, that's you cool. could. I mean, we probably won't have that many diagrams because in general, you only have one or two diagrams before people just glaze over and say, "What is this? An engineering exhibit?" Right. So we have to be careful about that. Um, by the way, the the space for this exhibit at the Computer History Museum is actually not that big. It's only about one half the size of this room. It's not bad, but it's not a lot of space. <coughs> right. That's for all the things being covered, right? No, just for Wikipedia. Yeah, so that's that's a fair amount. Yeah. But they have an entire gigantic first floor lobby of the museum that's going to be cut up into seven chunks. What, what's the height of the room? Is it much higher? Very high. Yeah. So it's like could, three stories high. We could in principle play also along the walls and uh, on the ceiling. Right. So one of the ideas we had for the size of Wikipedia is to make this gigantic stack of books. Like if you print out Wikipedia, how tall would it be? And we'd have something three stories high. And you'd show like Botanica is here, and then Wikipedia is all the way to the ceiling of the three stories. Somebody did an estimate the other day that it would be up to 18 and a half thousand. Wow, nice. If 
you if you look at the latest Wikipedia page where they says the size of Wikipedia, they have this guy standing like this in the graphic and the bookshelves. It's, well, it's pretty much filled that whole wall there. But if you stack it just one book on top of each other, it would probably go up to about three stories. So that's kind of neat to show how big it is like that. Right. So that is a possibility, but it would take more budget to do that. I don't know. You can get enough books yeah, everywhere. Basically. People are throwing away books in, in yeah. large numbers. So that's not the problem. I suspect it would be just kind of a lightweight model. But the idea is that this is meant to be there for five years, the exhibit. So that every, let's say every quarter, you can add more books. Editable. That's Must right. Editable. Five years is a long time, right? It's like, you know, yeah, more than almost half a lifetime. So that thing has to keep growing over the five years, right? Um, other things, impact of Wikipedia. So impact, I thought this is a really interesting one that we wanted to focus in on. It's one thing to say, oh, English language Wikipedia replaced Encarta, but what about all these languages for which Wikipedia is the first and most important encyclopedia, right? Again, uh, example from Kazakhstan, and today we heard it also from Armenia. There's uh, a number of languages in which large encyclopedias have been produced before, uh, and uh, for which people have uh, at least discussed putting them under an open license. And the okay. first one for which that worked was actually Kazakh. Mm. Uh, so they actually got the Soviet Kazakh encyclopedia completely under CC by SA, all uploaded, which uh, kind of pumped up the Kazakh Wikipedia by. 50,000 or so articles right, within right. a few weeks. And uh, that was a good basis to actually build a community because they suddenly had content. Right. And Armenia has done it the same way. And there's, of course, all the other Soviet republics that basically could do it the same way. Neat. And there uh, were Soviet languages from the former Soviet Republic. Right. Uh, and uh, so that's one approach that we should keep in mind. And, mm -hmm. uh, of course, you have then a lot of Soviet bullshit. Like in the articles about protein, I found an image of uh, Friedrich Engels, um, well, the friend of Karl Marx. Uh, right. Of course, he consists of protein. <laughs> and that, that, that was not really the best illustration. Right. And, uh, so there is a number of those kinds of things. But basically, it is a very good basis to start. Right. And, and that's something we should really keep in mind. Right. Make sure you jot that down. That's really, really good on the meter pad. Yeah, I'd love to find those stories where Wikipedia didn't just replace something, it pulled them along into the modern era or opened them up in ways that we didn't think. Um, let me see, unpacked Wikipedia, so again, you know, how they affected commercial, uh, commercial encyclopedias. Controversies, like how have they had a role in popular culture or in the news cycles? So, you know, in the English Wikipedia, at least, the Siegenthaler incident that got us to rethink how biographies of living persons work, that what is published in Wikipedia is no longer just on a website. It drastically affects people's lives if you have something erroneous in their articles, right? Um, Non-neutral editing, undue influence of public relations, corporations, like, you know, examples of people trying to <coughs> play with the Wikipedia <coughs> entries. Yeah. In the general Wikipedia, there was a, a long fight about uh, whether a certain tower would actually to be labeled a TV tower or not. Maybe just an image of that TV tower and then a little story around that uh, could be an interesting part of the exhibition. Right. Because there's different definitions of what, what is actually a TV tower and what is a, what was it like, a viewing tower. Um, and so uh, it was because of those uh, definitions were having some gray areas that right. people spend a month discussing whether right. it should be labeled or categorized this or that the other way. Right. Yeah, is it a viewing tower with TV antennas or is it a TV tower with a viewing kind, platform? Kind of, yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, POV pushers, famous edit wars, you know, Gdansk Danzig and other things like that. Beyond the web, so how has Wikipedia come out of just a website and become part of people's personal lives? So everything from QR codes to Monopedia and these projects where you have Wikipedia, you know, QR codes in real life everywhere. Um, Wikipedia Zero as well. Future Wikipedia, so, you know, growth, how's the community sustaining itself, gender gap, risks and threats to it. Right? So that's the general outline, which I think is a pretty good one that you can either expand on or contract, and it's pretty much got the whole complete story there. And then in terms of interactives, this is the tougher part, right? I'm sure you all know of little tools and things that used to exist and don't exist anymore or new ones being built. We thought, you know, what is a way, if you walked into this exhibit, to show the high effectivity of Wikipedia? Very hard, right? I always thought that the Wikimedia Foundation lobby should be doing that now. Like anyone who visits the lobby should say, well, that's what's happening in Wikipedia. Here's a count of all the languages. There's 
you know, all the edits being done and hear the new things that are happening and you see this hive activity. So what would that look like? There right, so you could, that. Just, what's that? There are screens for that in our lobby. They're just broken. They're just broken, yeah. I mean, this is a big problem, right? Five years, that's going to exist there. You know, what do you do? Is someone here, I was talking to someone before about how the foundation or the tech folks might want to dedicate a whole server just for visualization and doing these things so that it can be hermetically. But five years down the line, it will be heavily uh, overwhelmed by whatever tool that exists be. for that. On the other hand, the tool server lasted a long time before it was replaced, you know. It's not replaced yet. Yeah. So, you know, so some ideas. Have an instantaneous live display of the state or activity in Wikipedia. Show a network graph of interconnected articles and interlinking. You can kind of surf through Wikipedia just by clicking on nodes and you can see what they're connected to. Uh, Daniel showed me this the other day. Listen.hatnote.com. How many people have seen this one before with little audio sprinkles? I had not seen this until Daniel showed it to me, so we could take a look at this just to see. It was written by one of the foundation's lawyers. Who's that? Is it open source? It's in Vietnam. No, okay. my coding days are much further behind me. So Daniel, explain this because you know better what the parameters mean. I, I don't actually. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the basic parameter is basically the size of the circle um, represents the size of the edit and is correlated with the height of the tone that you hear. And of course the article title, uh, so the article title you can even click on them. And then they, uh, yeah, I actually don't like this welcoming new, new users because most of them are spam accounts. Yeah. It seems a little bit, it's not really the same thing as watching article activities see new users. Yeah, it would be nice if those were real users, but most of them are actually uh, spam accounts. Well, I thought we'd kind of need, even just, uh, not as a tool just to fascinate the public, but for admins. I'd love to see, like, each new user who gets registered, you see this, and then the visualization actually sh is correlated to what kind of activity they're doing. Because that allows you to spot spam That's and... That's the wrong time for that. <coughs> right. this, this is almost real time. It works a few seconds for each uh, item, but the people have to register, and they may take hours or days until making their first edit. Right. So this is really, it doesn't fit in here. Or you, you could do, you could put new users there in activity, but it doesn't decay in seconds, it decays in like minutes and hours, right? So you can kind of see patterns of editing and stuff like that. But I like this, it's really cool, right? Even the sources if, in GitHub. What's that? The sources in GitHub. The sources in GitHub. Sure. Um, while we're talking about visualizations and then uh, kind of doing different mm -hmm. um, scales, this reminds me of a visualization of that's earthquakes in Japan, because they have one basically on uh, every few minutes depending on what scale you look at. Like uh, beyond 2.5, they have them every minute. Right. Beyond six is roughly once a day or so, uh, somewhere in Japan. Right. And uh, there is the US Geological Survey. They have a nice visualization of that, right. uh, which decays exactly in the way that you say, basically. Oh, is that right? Um, that uh, they keep whatever there was, but the new ones are plotted on in the fall, fall frost. Right. Uh, and, and so, um, you kind of keep a record of those activities, but if something new happens, it's uh, overshadowing what was there in the same place. Right. right. Yeah, I'd love to see what reverts look like in an interface like this, and then like what big edits look like, small edits look like, and things like that. Any revert is just equal to any edit. It's right. just an edit that has happened to that page. Yeah, but you can you can just go further with this. Cool. Yeah. Now, is the X Y position got anything to do with it? I don't anything? think so. That would be great if you like, you know, basic. Subject matter, and then you can kind of see where they are in different nodes. So that's pretty cool. Hatnote.com, just plain Hatnote. Uh -huh. Apple Listen uh, visualizes uh, anonymous edits by geographic location. Yeah, I think cool. that's the same data source. Mm -hmm. He's also using uh, anonymous edits, um, so IP edits. Um, yeah. And so it's not the whole of the English Wikipedia. So this could be an interesting. Graphic just to run as well. Yeah. And in the longer term, it might be possible to get this uh, for all edits. Right. But right now, it's, it's limited to anonymous edits because we only have the IP addresses public for in the public stream right. uh, for anonymous edits. Right. Yep. That's but what we use the geolocation. The, the musical thing, as it doesn't have geolocation, it could basically do all edits, but I think it just does the same. Mm -hmm. Only the IP edits basically because it uses the same data source. Oh, yeah. And it also uses only English. Uh, 
course, be interesting to have it uh, for multiple oh. projects. Right. Has anyone seen Wikistream before? Yeah. So Wikistream is kind of interesting. I think it just moved to WF Labs recently. So this is another one where you can filter based on different things. Would be somebody copying all those uh, links into the Etherpad? We should. Yes. So someone put Wikistream in there. This is interesting. This is by Ed Summers, who's a who's also I'm, I'm also on the Wiki Glam US advisory board. He works at Library of Congress, and he's on the Wiki Glam. Uh, or Glam Wiki US Advisory Board too. He just did this in his spare time. And uh, it's pretty neat. He's, this is on GitHub as well. So you can do some interesting things here by you know, checking or unchecking whatever you want to filter on here. So this could be an interesting thing just to have running. Yeah, and you can have people play around with that. Like yeah. um, basically moving around, for instance, the, the box there for the size of the edit. Mm -hmm. They could move this around by moving it around the chair or whatever. Right. You don't necessarily have to require them to do this via the screen or right. via some keyboard or so. And this way they could adjust, or then they could kind of tick those boxes by uh, stepping their foot on certain um, parts of the checkerboard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, it'd be really neat because this is for all languages, so you can actually do interesting things lighting up different. It's not all, it's just uh, like the 50 largest. Oh, it's not all? Something like that. It says all Wikipedia's, but it's not really all Wikipedia. Yeah, yeah. So Great. Anyone else have any favorite visualizations that we could put up here? There's a, an equivalent to the one that you just showed uh, on HatNote, uh, which uses a Google map. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, don't, I don't know the address uh, off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. And there is the, the general Wikimedia edit counter that is now uh, approaching 2 billion. Right. It just shows a number that goes up and uh, that actually sums across all Wikimedia projects. Where is that? Uh, I think it's on a tool server, so basically now it's inaccessible. Oh. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, it's the, the official count. It was very popular around the time that we reached 1 billion edits, mm -hmm. which was something like two years ago or so. Or three, I don't remember. Yeah, I mean, this is really the, the thing that makes you a little nervous is that you want really want on a machine that's going to be stable as you make these deployments. Well, Labs was promised as. <laughs> Good. So, any other things that people can think of? Or yeah, I'll just add, add, add adding them. This is like a thing I really like. I will add that to the other patch. Oh, okay. So we can really listen to it. <laughs> well, I have a, one question that is sure. more general. Um, the impression of uh, the exhibition as the concept that you describe is quite of a um, Christopher Colombo presenting the new world to the empires <laughs> of uh, Europe, saying, we're going to find gold over there. So it's like a projection of uh, the new world, showing that uh, uh, there there is uh, you know, beauty and uh, excitement that is uh, nice. So it's quite a, my impression is a very positive uh, portrait of Wikipedia. Right. And uh, also it's something that is uh, elsewhere, mm -hmm. where, uh, in reality, since uh, uh, 400 million uh, people read Wikipedia. Actually, they are inside uh, somehow. Obviously, right. they maybe don't don't. They're not inside, uh, in you know, not completely. So they're not maybe editor, but they're inside because they're part of it. So they know what it's about. But maybe they don't know what is inside right. uh, in a proper way. And um, I was uh, uh, wondering, maybe it's my more controversial approach or my troll <laughs> approach to Wikipedia. But, um, I think it's. Uh, uh, what is interesting is how it's actually changing our society, so it's how uh, we are in it. And uh, I'm not sure that the point you highlighted as a um, uh, list uh, can give this impression. It's right. just a, a remark I wanted to... Yeah, I think, I think that's a good comment. Basically, if, you know, the, the outline that we had is almost like a historical thing. <coughs> but if you really want to put people in the present in terms of what is happening now and what does it mean, then it would be a different exhibit, or you'd need more to tell that side of things. I agree. Or also, if, we, if the exhibit is going to last five years, it would actually be nice to have a kind of a snapshot of how Wikipedia is now, and then to uh, be able to relate that to how it is when the people are going to visit that exhibit. Right. Like playing around with a dump, or uh, having some uh, exhibits uh, circled around diffs version history. Version history would actually be very important to me. Mm -hmm. and I, I think I have in my mind something like um, the, the history of 
mankind's understanding of certain concepts, like let's say the solar system or so. We started with the ancient Babylonians, then the Greeks came around, did something to, uh, those basically edited the page, and later on there was uh, a few hundred years of nothing. Then uh, came people like Copernicus and Galileo, Galileo that was then receiving a message on his talk page by the Inquisition, please revert your edit, you reverted his edit, and this kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, but I just, I have no idea how to really make that, to visualize that. It's, right. it's, I think that's, it would be very educational, and it kind of illustrates how Wikipedia works, but I have no idea how to really bring that over. I am not right. a video artist or so. Right. I mean, my, while we're looking into this, I mean, if, if I had a big screen like this, or a big wall like that, I'd love to have something I wish I had at home, which is, right now when you look at an article, and you want to look at the edit history, and then discussion page, and whatever, you need to hit a tab, and it blanks the screen, and another. so it's a mode, 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 mode. I'd like to say, here's the article, here's the edit history, there's a talk page, there's all the media being used in it, there's some stats about it. So it's like, you give me the article, and it just brings up this gigantic display of all the stuff related to it. Right. They kind of need, it's like each one is its own flat screen, and you can see all the center of okay, it. So you're more or less talking about literally being in the one page, or in the one screen view. Right. The thing is that most computers or pads or anything just couldn't cut, it would be just so dense. Oh yeah, it'd be tiny. But that's why if you have a wall, then you basically have like six Samsung monitors. One is the article, one's the talk page, one's the edit history, one's the stats, one is all the media being used in there. So you get like all the pictures and video in there. See, that's a, a big problem for a lot of places where, um, just the amount of time waiting for stuff to load. If you've got a poor connection, you're like, around the world with They have a great good connection. They sit right in the back of Google. Yeah, that's not a problem. problem. You see, there are a lot of people who have had very slow loading times around the world. Not everybody has. No, I'm talking about a museum exhibit you can control. You can test it, you can get wi optimized. Wi public Wi Fi, their mountain view is better than what they have at the <laughs> university. The Computer History Museum is next door to Google headquarters. I mean, they're, they're their set. So they actually, Google did give them this 3D version of, not 3D, but a surround version of Google Maps, which is super high fidelity, and you can actually navigate it, and it just pops like that. Zoom in? Yeah, you can just fly over, zoom in. It's a 3D controller. You're surrounded like this, and there's no delay at all. So, you know. We could give them something similar in terms of version history. They could dive into the version history of whatever the article yeah, they are interested in. Yeah, I mean, they, the average consumer looks at a Wikipedia article and doesn't realize all the stuff behind the scenes that got them there. So what if, when you show them an article, you said, oh, by the way, you never saw this before, but edit history, the discussion pages, and all this other stuff around it, right? There's okay. also this guy uh, in, in London who printed out uh, the version history for one article about the Iraq War, history of the Iraq War, I think it was, right. uh, about three years ago or so that he did that, he printed every individual uh, revision and put that together into a book which was actually 12 volumes or something like that. Yeah, that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I actually contacted him to, to get his ideas about the ship. He didn't have uh, really new ones. Um, but yeah, so we could get, do something like this for mm -hmm. some interesting articles. Right, and the only thing, last thing I'll just show you is just some of the pictures from there, which is interesting and so on. So, you know, we basically brainstormed using post-its. We broke into little groups and we used a very IDEO style brainstorming technique, which is you know, calling out your ideas, writing them on post-its, no filtering at the time. Then only later on did we start to filter down some of these ideas. Are you also doing something on the future? We didn't at this point. For this exhibit, we didn't do much on the future. Um, like I'd love to have the review. If it's not growing that fast, what, I mean, what are the kind of what's happening? Yeah, we did do that. Like, you know, what we did kind of say, what's in the future? And then, you know, the slope is going down. There's a gender gap. Um, when you grow like this to fill 4.2 million articles and you're flattening out, it's like there's not another 4.2 million articles to write in, that we know of you know, easily. They're going to come slower. So what does that mean for community? How does it sustain itself? How do you get the, the activity in the community to stay, sustain itself? Yeah. There's a, a number of uh, milestones that are kind of ahead, like, uh, and there's plays around that. Like, you can make predictions when, what will be the date when the fifth million article will be. Uh, that's an interesting idea. This kind of stuff. That, uh, that's a way to engage. The right. Community. Guess the day. Right. You invite them to bed. Invite them to bed. Yes. Yeah, and then uh, also maybe offer some prizes. Uh, right. Uh, all right.
So they get uh, one year free entry to the museum or this kind of stuff if they are the closest. Right. Yeah, I mean, we had some very basic ideas as well for interactivity. Obviously, you could have a station where you could try to edit Wikipedia, but that's without a visual editor. That was a crazy idea. Um, but now a visual editor, maybe. Who knows? Another idea was to get them to look up their <coughs> Wikipedia article about their hometown or where they lived, because they're likely the expert about it, and for them to go in and rate it. Like, you know, so how would you rate the accuracy, completeness, or whatever? And that's kind of interesting to get some feedback from people who know that subject. And that could either be put into a queue for other Wikipedians, or they could try editing it themselves. But the output of that would be kind of neat. We thought, well, at least I thought, it would be nice to have a printer there that spits out little business cards. And you could spit out a little card with the QRpedia code on it that could take away this little card that actually links to the Wikipedia article for their town. Right? So they can keep it in their wallet or do anything they want. Say, oh, by the way, this is my Wikipedia article from my town, and carry it around with them. I mean, ostensibly, you could make a printer that prints out a little card for any article in Wikipedia and just have it there so they could always print out that. If they want to print out the article about sex or crazy stuff like that, they could. But it'd be kind of a neat takeaway that they could have that links them to Wikipedia. Yeah. Now, uh, excuse me, I, I wouldn't agree uh, because uh, it's easier to remember a word than to carry around the ticket, like the card. But I like the idea of this part that. I would say, why don't you have a printout of the QRP code that links to your favorite article on your T-shirt, and you take that T-shirt away. You could do that too. That's a great idea. Yeah, like a custom printed T-shirt right there. Right. And, and then you can wear your QR code right. on your back or something. Right. Like that. This is my favorite Wikipedia article, right. so it gives you. We should do that here. Why would we bother with the museum? We should have a printer out there, and you have custom printed T-shirts on the spot. Mm -hmm. yeah, That's right. a great idea. Yeah. What's something I was joking with SJ Klein about? We should actually have a 3D printer here. We can print barn stars. Yeah, that and you can have a physical nice. barn star. Yeah. Like every single one should have their customized barn star when they register, which yeah. would be really cool. Yeah. All, all no. the London planners are here. And we think we've got to wait till London to do it. But, uh, you've, got to, you've got to think about them, and that, that's an idea that they might like. Yeah. And if they're really thinking of kind of a more make your fair type of feel there for certain parts of it, that would be great. Yeah, yeah that would be great. <laughs> Yeah. Just, just getting back to the, the um, some of the urban myths that have been created about Wikipedia has only got so many articles to go. Mm -hmm. There is a, there's a real major perceptual issue on the part of some editors that that there are no black holes. Mm -hmm. But if you've worked in, um, there are no black holes. Who says that? It, well, some people say, oh, we've reached the maximum possible number of articles, which I personally think is completely wrong. I think that's kind of so a straw man. I don't think anyone says that, but I think... Well, the people have... Well, it, the it, the it low hanging of fruit is, pages, is gone. Yeah, I would say that. But. It shows up on talk pages. It, it becomes its own little urban myth, uh -huh. as if we've got everything covered. And one of the things that I was talking about my proposal was that there are huge amounts of subjects which a, 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 a particular demographic of a Wikipedia editor just doesn't seem to have it in their head. Right. right. It's not in, not in their perception or their understanding of the, of the, the landscape of, of what's on the planet. Mm -hmm. There are huge amounts of parts of each country which are just not, not up there. There are no articles about a whole range of subjects to any, any one area on the planet. Yeah, or we'll take biological species, we just covered uh, half a million of them. And they're on the order of 10 million roughly described. So Thank you. Yeah. Well, let me just show you the space roughly, if you uh, just to give you some context for this. So this is the space that is now taken up by this is the Google what do you call it, street map, street view, Google Street View car. It's an example of where they drive around and right. So this, believe it or not, you know, there's the Wikipedia exhibits can be in this space. Look how high this ceiling is here. So this is a really really tall ceiling. You should actually play with that third dimension. Exactly. That's important because it is often neglected in the museum exhibit and this kind of uh, forcing people to change their perspective is actually kind of what we want. Right. Most, uh, and what it, I think it would be kind of cool, like you have to climb these stairs and look at the top to see something at the top of the stack or do something like that. Oh, right. Perhaps by by putting your feet on those stairs, something happens <laughs> on the feet Right. So this is kind of neat. Uh, it's not a great space because it's got little obstructions, but you can use this height for a lot of them. Um, let me just show you some more things here. 
Can I ask another question? Sure. Um, what kind of li license uh, will have uh, the text uh, you prepare for the exhibition? That's I mean, a good you question. Use, uh, I, think it's I think it's traditional copyright, but we're trying to get them to release uh, a lot of stuff under Creative Commons. But yeah, it's a good point. We should see if they'll do that. So at least well, I would say if, it, if there's community input, contributions. <laughs> if there's that? community yeah. input, it should be CC BY. <laughs> I'm sorry? If there's community input, it should be Wikimedia compatible. Yeah, yeah. And also because we, unfortunately our contribution is share alike, so right. <laughs> we won't be able to use any of the discussion session. <laughs> yeah, interesting. I, I should bring that up with them because they were actually very receptive to, to Creative Commons licenses for like pictures and media and stuff like that. But but you're right, if they're using share like stuff, they've gotta throw it out there afterwards, right? This was one of the prototypes of and what especially the especially if it is gonna be editable throughout these five years. I mean it is not possible to do so if you don't have it on the number of right. so I mean the good good news is that they are actually much more tech and geek types than they are museum curator types, because it'd be much harder to tr convince traditional blend people this is a viable thing. But we have a lot of uh, plums that are actually doing it, uh, using Creative Commons attribution share like licenses, That's so good. they are documentation, I'm sure you can do it. <laughs> That's good. No, I'm just saying that because they're jacking to the geek culture, it's yeah. a little bit easier they're to convince them. Because when I brought it up with them before, they're like, oh yeah, that'd be kind of neat, well, let's look into that. Whereas, you go to other folks in the traditional glam community and say, what the heck are you talking about? I'm not going to do anything like that. So they were they were very receptive to some of them. So this is an example of some visualization of what it could look like. Not the exhibit, but any set of exhibits in that space. Um, and then this is just the floor plan for that area. Um, and then, anything else? Another thing, yeah, so it's not just surviving three years, surviving five years. How do you keep this thing fresh? How do you have dynamic you know, change in these interactives. Um, let's see, what are the other things that they claim? So we had this brainstorming. Any other ideas that you folks had for either something that are meaningful interactives? We had some folks there who participated in this from the glam side, you know, Sarah Sturch and um, Lori Phillips, but they are self-admitted uh, haters of interactives. They actually don't like interactives, so we didn't get a lot of Feedback from them. Any other ideas? Um, there's a number of uh, plays that kind of have a Wikipedia component. So, for instance, there's this uh, play um, which used to be played on the tool server. I'm, I'm not sure whether it still exists. Uh, in which you ha kind of have to find the shortest path between two different articles. You right. Can have that visitors play mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. perhaps checking whether there's any loop in uh, those two articles that you select. So, right. The game basically goes you choose a random article A. You choose a random article B, you check whether um, there is a loop in terms of linking between the two, and if not, then you ask the people to find the shortest path, which is normally around six links. Right. And normally it goes via US or philosophy. <laughs> philosophy, right. I remember yeah. philosophy was the big one, right? Yeah, philosophy was the big one, but uh, for some articles it was also US. <laughs> and That's uh, disturbing. this is a kind of way this, uh, or another representation of knowledge graphs could be in, um, interesting. Like what I meant uh, when you just discovered uh, or described those uh, stairs that go upstairs, uh, mm -hmm. we could make them walk the knowledge graph while walking upstairs and this kind of stuff. Right. See, every, every time they step on a new step, they could kind of. Um, Click on a link in the article that they, in the previous stair, represented, kind of. Yeah, the Etherpad is weak here. Uh, yes, it really is. Um, Don't. But Not good. how many, how, how much public do you actually expect? Because well, I, I like the idea of you very much, mm -hmm. but I imagine if we have like 200 visitors at a time, it might be pretty hard to provide all of that technical detail. Yeah. So, I mean, what kind of visitors are you expecting, anyhow? I don't know. I think that is a very important question. Do you, uh, you mean, I'm sorry, what volume or what type? Both. 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 Yeah. Both. Like, is it more school classes that are coming, or is it like the international right. art tours coming, or is it the From what I can tell, you know, it's a mix of school groups and fairly motivated individuals. It's not a museum you stumble upon walking through San Francisco. You have to make an appointment to drive down there. And then like 80% of the geeks in Silicon Valley 
I say, oh, you're going to the Computer History Museum. Well, I guess, I guess museum? everybody interested in technology that goes to San Francisco goes there. Is that so? Oh, no, so, 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 they go to Mountain, Mountain View, yes, but not to the not to that museum. museum. No, no. Well, I, I would have said so. No. Really? No. Nobody I'm shocked how museum. many people I know who are geeks have <laughs> one never been there, the two don't know about it. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right, but okay, maybe they so live I, I there. Maybe no, but I'm glad you hang out with really smart, good people. But uh, yeah. it might be because they live there, and that's very often a tendency that museums are not visited by the locals. That's right. Yeah. But, but you but should it, find out about that. That's yeah. very important in yeah. order to address properly right. the visitors that are supposed to come. Or even like having a target. Maybe right now they're just having school classes from primary school coming there because they are happy with the kind of things they might find there. Yeah. But others would say, oh, this is all boring. Right. Um, there, there's a computer museum in, in Germany, and I have two boys. They are like teenagers. And they tell me, no, this is too boring. We won't go there. Really yeah, no, yeah. because all these old things, I mean, right. yeah. it's not worthwhile. They were very keen on it when they were small, and right. they could play computers there. But nowadays, they. My bet is, is the existing Computer History Museum permanent exhibit is probably, even though I like it a lot, probably more like the museum you described, mm -hmm. which is behind glass. Yeah, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. There are some things, you can go and play Nintendo, you can play this stuff, and you can play 8-bit games and stuff, which mm -hmm. is kind of cool for kids. But in the end, it is about, look, this is the TI-99 that was yeah. the first right. you know, computer that did X, Y, and Z. And for kids, it's like, I don't care. Why should I care? Is it blinking? It's not blinking. I don't know what to do with this, right? So for geeks like us, it's like, oh, I remember. Oh, that was so it's such a nice. Yeah, computer. but that's nostalgia. It's nostalgia, and yeah. that's what happens. Is it was meant as a computer warehouse for geeks uh, at the very beginning, and it comes. And then so the, geeks a, are not coming, so the geeks are not coming. The geeks are not coming. Something yeah. wrong in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, and who's yeah. paying for it? I'm sorry. Who's paying for it? Here's the interesting thing: budget is not a problem for this museum oh, because okay. all the Pioneers of Silicon Valley are all donors, board members, whatever. So like Steve Wozniak, Gordon Moore, you name that pioneer in Silicon Valley, they've donated. So the funny thing is money is no object in those two cases. It's just that how do you get people in the door, right? So they're not doing a great job of that, you know. Yeah. yeah on that point, uh, a few additions. One in, in that um, boat exhibition that I was talking about, they got on the order of 100,000 visitors per year. Uh, second, um, do you uh, envision people wearing things like Google Glasses uh, there? Because then you could actually have a personalized user experience. It doesn't matter whether they come by the uh, uh, 200 or so. We could all have them walk individually that staircase and they would still get an individualized experience. That's interesting, huh? Yeah, yeah. that's a great idea. For five years, Google Glass will definitely you know, keep advancing. Yeah, or something uh, right. that makes it in augmented reality. You can give, give them VR uh, helmets, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Good, jot that down if Etherpad is working. Yes. Question, Andrew. Uh, you uh, mentioned that, that away. Uh, this yeah. wiki exhibit is part of one of seven. Yes. The other six, has it been done yet? Have they been done? Uh, they're doing it all in parallel. Okay. Yeah. It would be nice to have some interaction between those. Yeah, like, because that would be interesting, yeah. actually. MRI yeah. could be mm -hmm. uh, really easy. Uh, right. I mean, uh, we already have loads of videos. I've uploaded on the order of a thousand videos of MRI onto comments, and uh, we have very good articles around that subject. Right. We probably have good articles about the other subjects as well. Right. And uh, so that would be a nice way that could be kind of in the center of the exhibition. And we could kind of steal a bit of room from the other uh, parts <laughs> of the exhibition by providing additional value uh, right. in, that, in that corner of their uh, part. That's a good idea. I didn't think of that. But it's a good way to get more room. It's just, it's just to steal the room. Right? <laughs> I'm sorry if you discussed this before I came in. What are the other six? Um, I don't have the complete list. I mean, I do. I have to look up my email. But um, some of them are MRI. Uh, auto crash simulation software, soft, uh, SMS, short message, um, I think iTunes or digital music, MP3. So they're all software technologies that have changed our lives. The thing is, why I'm asking that question is, to me, this museum is very disjointed. It's all about it. All of these seven topics might be, might be standalone, yes. Right. But if you can create a very holistic visitor experience, it will be more um, logical for the people to come. Right. Yeah, right. Instead of just, oh, I'm interested in Wiki, I'll go for Wiki. 
I don't choose an MRI, I'll just go for MRI. But instead, they must all blend in together. It yeah. is possible. I think they're trying to put a, to weave a narrative through them. Yeah. I don't think it'll be a very strong narrative, honestly. Okay. But, um, but they, it's <coughs> under the rubric of software technologies that change our lives. I think whether you're here or not, before, the problem with this museum is it's always been hardware, 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 hardware. This is their first foray into saying, here's what these things have meant or how they've changed our lives, not just, by the way, we have this really valuable historic piece of supercomputing history here, which is unfortunately their reputation at this point. So they're trying to break out of that to say, we're just telling you a story about how it affects your life and not just we are a warehouse of hardware. Okay. Yeah. Because for the longest time, they were closed for about two years. No public visitors, and all they were was for a storehouse for hardware. And special tours, you could go through there and just kind of walk through, wow, there's a Cray, wow, there's a CDC. For geeks, that's great. But they tried to upgrade it, but they're trying to get more to the lives of average people. Even more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Uh, right now, when I made this stupid comment, I forgot what I wanted to say, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Etherpad, you gotta jot down Etherpad first. Yeah. Um, any other questions from folks? Like either ideas or concerns you have about an exhibit that you might want to... You should go to Karlsruhe, to the ZMK. To the where? That's a museum which understands how to present hardware. Okay. What? ZMK? I have another question. What is exactly your role in the exhibition? So you're a co-curator? Yeah, I'm, I'm a consultant, co-curator. Yeah. We're still trying to work out the exact title. But just for that part of this mm -hmm. exhibit. So the exhibition will be wider? So, or which, which part? The, the, the no, just the Wikipedia the part. So the other six are other okay. people doing it. Right. But they're, it's all on the same staff, but for the Wikipedia part. Mm -hmm. right. And it's going to be plan a catalog? Uh, I don't know about a catalog, but the Computer History Museum there says any physical exhibit, they always have a web version. Okay. Uh, in a significant way, too, not just a token way. So it's going to have an online component to all this. Ideally, they said pretty much anything you do interactive in person, they'd love to have a version of it online for anyone else. I don't know if that's going to be entirely possible, but... That would make sense also for an international project. Yes. That would be quite interesting. Because I was thinking in the perspective of... Uh, um, develop further this idea of exhibition or trying to bridge it in another location. Right. I have the impression that, uh, of course, uh, uh, some of the components can be interesting. The outline, for example, can help identifying which can be relevant session according to right. the exhibition. But I have the impression that uh, um, uh, maybe it can be also useful to um, uh, consider, since it's a part of an exhibition, negotiating on uh, how to make it you know, it's, it's crazy thing. So it would be probably more interesting to design uh, maybe a group that wants to work on uh, something like that and uh, imagine a, a completely different thing. Right. That would probably make it easier. And uh, maybe eventually the online part that could be maybe something that can be bridged. Right. Which can also recognize the uh, pioneer role of uh, other project. Right. To I mean, I, I, I could easily see what we started with this and what maybe you folks can help develop, and maybe after your two exhibits, for Wikimania to always have a kind of traveling exhibit that wherever city we go to, that courtyard should have a place where anyone in Hong Kong can go to without having to pay, pay a ticket or anything just to learn about Wikipedia, right? They go through this exhibit that we plan, they can sit down and say, I want to learn how to edit. Awesome. We've got a scanner here. We've got a, a camera. You can try taking pictures of things, you know, just to get that maker fair type of feel to things. It's a lost opportunity that we have. Yeah, we definitely that is just so important what you just said. Yeah. That, that really should be said in very loud voices to people organizing. Yeah. And if you heard about their plans for London, they want 10,000 people at Wikimania next year. I think that's a little oh, bit wow. crazy myself because it's no longer community, no. you know. Okay. But they're looking for like TED style talks, they're looking for gigantic venues and things like that. So even if they do do that, that's an opportunity if we can get this exhibit thing together to actually have this, you know, I don't know what you call it, a learning tent or whatever you want to call it. Well, the, 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 the trucks you have right around, around 
Right. A roadshow. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Traveling into the Damascus has uh, had a roadshow uh, project, so they just hired uh, uh, maybe not a truck, but a small, small, small mm -hmm. car, but right. put there some laptops and right. some leaflets, and they were just traveling across small. Right. Towns and right. uh, so, so any of you, I mean, a lot of you folks, <laughs> you folks are much more experienced in the actual physical exhibit design than I am. Like, I can, I know the history of it, Wikipedia, but in terms of what would be practical that you could kind of pack up into a crate, ship somewhere, and unpack it mm -hmm. in a meaningful, easy way, that would be. Have the, the Wikipedia balloon has something that you can really blow up. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. Right. Right. Uh, some, some more ideas. Wikipedia offline is not something we've discussed yet, like Kivix or so. Right, right. Uh, another thing, given that the exhibition is going to last for five years, there must be some part that has to be updatable in some way. And I would actually like to involve the visitors mm -hmm. in, in that part uh, right. uh, as well, or especially in that part. So right. we, uh, because um, whenever we start having this exhibition, mm -hmm. Some parts will get easily out of date, mm -hmm. and I would like to avoid that because, uh, and and then I would also like to get the community involved with updating this stuff, and but I, I don't have good ideas on, on right. that. But it, it would be really wiki-ish to, to right. have this updatable, whereas all the other exhibits maybe do not get updated. Right. Um, right. Another idea we had related to that was to have a. You know, all Wikipedia on a USB drive, and you sell it at cost. So at the end of the exhibit, you could like pay five or ten bucks, and you get all Wikipedia on a pen drive. So that's an idea as well. Is a shopping good? <laughs> What's that? Is a gadget or shopping good? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, what then be? Where does the money go? Does it go to the museum? Yeah, exactly. Right. It would right. be since uh, the museum has already money, that would be great to use it actually to finance or maybe some yeah, like project. Yeah, merchandising. Because right now, you know, the computer history museum doesn't really have much in terms of merchandising that would make your make your head turn. You know, it's not much that we do. Are you thinking about uh, uh, how to make people overseas experience the exhibition? Right. So maybe through social networks, I don't know, or maybe through comments of visitors. <coughs> uh, there's there's uh, one way in which the Wikimedian residence at the Natural History Museum in London currently tries to work on that. Mm -hmm. Like he has set up a special way of linking uh, files on Commons, basically via the QRpedia codes, so that uh, he gets a multilingual guide through the museum by some dedicated pages on Commons. And uh, so if we could mirror the exhibition, including all parts, not just the Wikipedia part, on commons, that would be nice. Uh, so we could get all the images, <coughs> of all the things that are in the other part, or in all parts of the exhibition, and then people who, uh, for whatever reason, cannot go to Mountain View, they can still uh, experience the exhibition. Yeah. To that, I remember there's this museum, I think it's in Belgium, or Brussels, I can't remember. Uh, they actually have, um, volunteers, guides, uh, that wears, um, they have an iPad camera, mm -hmm. and it goes on live. So if I'm a visitor, let's say, in, in Hong Kong, and I'd like to visit the art museum, I want to see for myself what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So there's an option on the website, you can click and have a live, uh, live feed. The, the guide will actually bring the iPad around to show you how it looks like. Mm -hmm. That would be one way to look at it. Right. Right. <coughs> I'm that band is not a problem. Right. Uh, yeah, band won't be a problem. So since your your experience in exhibit design and these things, have you seen this concept before of this kind of traveling roadshow of packing a whole kind of mini museum exhibit in a crate or something? Yeah. Uh, for traveling exhibits, a lot of time it's uh, the, the, the software is from the origin. Mm -hmm. And a lot of a lot of the hardware is actually being built by the, well, it's been taken care of by the museum where the traveling exhibition is going to. Right. Yeah, so there's it's not going to be a, a very big challenge to do a traveling exhibition. Mm -hmm. It's more how you update the contents to be relevant to the uh, destination. Right, right. So for example, language translations, mm -hmm. uh, contacts, sensitivity, right. things like that. Right. 
that's a great point. I mean, how do you localize it and yeah. keep it flexible as yeah. you go? And there's nothing more challenging than trying to tell Wikipedia's exhibit as you ship this thing around. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's very, very tough. Any other ideas or questions or thoughts? Open Knowledge Foundation, is there something interesting for Open Knowledge to team up on? I don't know. In London? Uh, no, we yeah. talked about data. London is where, yeah, yeah, that's true. OKF is headquartered in London, right? Open Knowledge? Yeah, we have chapters um, and local groups all over the world, so staff can come to international. Um, yeah, I, was, I have to say I'm, I'm very unfamiliar with exhibitions, so I have no personal experience with it. One exhibition on, on open data with some friends from Italy in the Berlin-based uh, computer museum. Um, I'm not sure if it was really pretty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but data wasn't a part of the picture yeah. yet, so we could really so think about how data could be kind of made experienceable. But some of those visualizations go that way somehow. Right. <coughs> but. Yeah, I'd love to have uh, the ability for people to kind of take home their own piece of Wikipedia in some way. Yeah. Other than the printable bar star. No, well, uh, <laughs> or, 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 or a performance. Or yeah, the, the wall in Berlin, for instance, uh, when it was still there, everybody came there to, to knock out a little piece and then to take home. Principal, we could have a wall there. We actually do have a wall there, uh, but we could have a, a one that uh, they were allowed to hack on, right? Uh, and then uh, some way to kind of uh, preserve the image that was uh, displayed there, so that they can take a piece of Wikipedia home. So we would display Wikipedia pages there on that wall, in in a way that kind of ingrains that for a certain period of time, and then uh, they can kind of fix that. Uh, state by um, just painting it with some chemical, then they hack it out and they take it home. Yeah, but the, the, the point was when taking down the wall, that was like an act of liberation. liberation. Yeah. yeah. We were taking down the wall. Yeah, we were taking down the wall. Act of destruction. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. we were taking down the Wikipedia. I mean, that's somehow, we, we should find like, something else to put there. Like more of this taking down the paywalls, maybe to open up. You know, that would be like if you hack down the wall, you get a You're beautiful view. You're freeing up information, yeah. Or you get a beautiful view on the Silicon Valley, or I don't know. But I mean, you have to be very careful with those pictures. You know, if, if you have the, 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 the wall taken down, I mean, this does tell you some, some story. Yeah. Did anyone know what we did at Wikimedia in 2007? It was very similar. We had this gigantic ball there. Did anyone see? And it was a puzzle sphere, a real live puzzle sphere. And then at the end, so this was hanging in the middle of the space the whole week, almost like out there. And then at the end, at the closing ceremony, uh, they put on stage this right there and broke it into all little pieces and everyone, everyone rushed the stage and each one took a little puzzle piece and left. So actually, now that globe is distributed across different Wikipedians. Around. How many pieces did it have on the other few hundred? I don't know if it was a few hundred, but it was definitely a hundred, some, over a hundred. It was that. So just as a weird historical note. But it's pretty. You can't edit that like that part. I mean, but having people construct something like this is a collaborative endeavor. And then it would be nice if they could actually take some memory of it. But uh, how would you do that uh, with people on go? Like, okay, you could, for instance, give them uh, uh, like have two or three of those uh, in, in parallel, you give them uh, some pieces that they can add and they're allowed to take one away. Right. That's an idea. But that creates very metastable uh, spheres, so, so the idea <laughs> is not entirely complete. That's right. Maybe, maybe you could do something that you invite people to actually, while in the museum, edit a Wikipedia article. Right. And then they could get some kind of recognition. I, I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe they, you could. Start. No, no. You could visualize whatever the their contribution compared to the to the Google Wikipedia. 
Right. And then somehow visualize that and give them a little badge for that. I mean, right. They would print that on their business card. Yeah, that's true. It's almost like I do, I donated blood today, and you wear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. yeah. I, I did like zero point zero zero zero. That was my contribution <laughs> right. today. Yeah. Right. But yeah. still, I mean, yeah. they yeah. make it look funny. Yeah. Right. That's what, what so we so just had. Every zero is like one piece of chain, yeah. in, uh, one link in the, in the chain. You say, I edited Wikipedia today, you put the article name and then the QR code for that diff or whatever. And then yeah. like, yeah. maybe yeah. a sticker or a business card or something. Yeah, and the right. people are like, what the heck are you wearing? What is that? Oh, I edited Wikipedia. And then you can scan it and see what they did. Kind of interesting. Yeah. 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 All weird ideas that I hope we get to try in one way or another. Yeah, okay, but how is the, uh, the way moving forward? Uh, how does it work? Uh, like your um, interaction with the museum there, at, at some point they want to have a number of, like say, individual uh, exhibits that are proposed in the Wikipedia corner, mm -hmm. or individual activities that are proposed for visit visitors. Right. Well, the, the best thing to do is first is to sign up on the, on the page, um, Computer History Museum. Yeah, I've, I think I've signed up there like half a year ago and nothing happened since. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because we, you have to be in California for this stuff now, but we'd like but to... But not for this kind of brainstorm. No, no, we want to move this outside of just California meetups. I mean, that's the problem is before, they didn't want to do like Skype-based or even like IRC-based brainstorm. They wanted people in that room. It's still very traditional that way. They have a museum designer there, they have all these folks. So I'd like to make this more distributed going forward. If we have a chance of doing some kind of like outreach or traveling well, exhibit. If, we, if you could tell them that we doubled that exhibition, we would have one in Silicon Valley and the other one in Berlin, they might thrill these museums. Yeah, plus the initial sale and on the boat. Like, uh, you know. Right. So it's getting one in the internet. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if, right. yeah. yeah, that's right. And other piece of software. So go to this page, Computer History Museum Exhibit there, and put your name at the bottom at least so I can find you. Well, right. it's not there anymore. This is much shorter than I remember. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wow, there's some edit work going on. No? <laughs> <laughs> History in the making. Okay, so why don't you put there? Ah, I see Daniel's name is here. Yeah, Good for you. Yeah. Andrew, so, I did it the old-fashioned way and left my card. Oh, thank you. Thank you. For you. Yeah. Right. If you want to talk to them about licensing mm -hmm. uh, or creative comments or anything, I'd be happy to Oh, thank you. That'd be that. great. Yeah. Actually, no worries, I have to go to 532. So. What's that? Creative Commons sits right around the corner. That's true. We have Kat Walsh there, who is the, uh, you know, who's with Creative Commons too. All right, thanks, folks. Keep in touch. Yes. Is it now? Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's a visual history, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 Quid T, who's a library English librarian in Canada, oh, and I tried to put a proposal to actually look at the sorts of things we need to keep tabs of uh -huh. if we wish to keep like in in the industry inside Wikipedia. Yeah, that'd be interesting. So what I'm, uh, what I try, because Quiddity is pretty good on this. Uh, that conversation is off, uh, offline, right? And someone just showed me the Indonesian version of your book. Uh, and oh, great! I've never seen it in in, in person. I have seen pictures of it. And what I was thinking I would like to do is just leave that with you. I've, I've got you using that because what we're thinking of trying to work out, we didn't, we missed out this time. But we're considering yeah. the, the immensity of London, there's every likely chance of micro leaks. Yeah. Our idea about actually creating, well, I mean, we might have got something done before London, right. which to actually have just like the equivalent of yet another project inside the media that's right. trying to be, trying to make sure that everything is centralised in understanding all the clues and bits and pieces. So what we should do is also right. annual right. visitors to so the... So those, um, in, other, in other words, like a self so inside the that their contributions are under... Yeah, and 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 so on. yeah that'd be great. Them, but I just thought it would be really great to run past it while we're doing it. You don't mind actually being out to us here in Korea or something like that? If we just email you every now and then? Yeah, that'd be great. Just to try to get it up and running? Because it's, it's a bit like the whole land exercise. Right. Land are really focused with their own project maintenance in relation to knowing where information is. <laughs>
you understand that as well. You agree with that? Well, thank you. I appreciate you saying that. <laughs> okay, Nadia, bye. Hey, thank you for your time. Right, let's keep That was excellent. Okay, good, good, good. Our social media is really uh, alive and we do give uh, uh, competitions and stuff like that. And good. We, we, I'm, I'm here to give different ways to input. Oh, great. To get Absolutely, I'd be happy to. I've never seen this in person. I've only seen it remotely, so this is pretty cool. Wow. The I font is the, even the same, which is good. I think the, the, the translator did the don't think about the DVD. You see the wiki, wiki bus there? So. <laughs> Great. Well, I'm happy to. One of the events uh, this month was uh, ask your question to Jimmy, and we'll try to get Jimmy to answer them. Our part. Right. <laughs> Great. Great. Might I might take a picture with you in the books? Because I've never had <laughs> in person. I, I take a picture of both of you. Oh, great. Thank you so much. Just tell me where to do what to do. Where oh, I just uh, hold them like this. Where do I have to put ah, Right there. Okay. Yep. All right. Maybe you should be smiling more. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Thanks a lot. Good meeting you. And, uh, Good talk. Stay in touch. Before I get nervous by the oh, other card, just have my card. And, yes. uh, thank you. And I, I would appreciate if you could follow up that talk to us. That would be great. What's your time frame? You know. Um, well, um, the exhibition in Berlin is going to start in 2015, so. Mm. We're Soon. starting work that yeah. this, uh, this autumn we will have the first brainstorming, right. thinking like what could our contribution be. Okay. So it might be nice to tell them, well, right. we are planning something similar in the Silicon Valley. So, yes. you know, yeah. I, just, I know that museum people do like these international exchanges yes. things, so yes. it might be nice. Great. Okay. Yeah, I look forward to it. Thank you. I just do things so old fashioned ways. Oh, okay. thank you. Yeah. So, if you have any, I'm sure there are very good exhibit designers in California. Right, if right. you have any questions, just don't hear me. Okay, thank you so much. So, you're, you're based here? Yeah. Okay. Great. Good. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Good yeah. meeting you. Yeah. I'd like to have you card oh, too. Um, I think that's interesting. Uh, oh, shit. I have my headphones. Not so good one, if you don't mind. Well, I don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is practical information. Okay. It's not like to put so on the wall. Thank you. Okay, and you're based in Hong Kong? Yes, uh, we have an office in Amsterdam. Oh, we're right. actually in touch with a, a company, so perhaps oh, okay. if you need any assistance, I'll get my Dutch uh, counterparts to get Are you uh, uh, co working with uh, the Rex Museum in Amsterdam? Have you been doing anything uh, on your no, recent that, that's more, that's more to with the art museums. I like, uh, pretty sure that we get over there did something oh, right. interactive. Okay. Sure the, the, the yeah. Okay. Okay. And you, Andrew, you don't have a card? Yeah. I believe I do. Okay, that's a website. Yeah, website. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see ya. Okay, so take I, care. Bye. I actually should be using more of them because they're all Wikimania, Wikimania themed cards, let's see.